Good. Let me uh, open up with a word of prayer. Once we get everybody in here. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just thank you for this night, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given me for the night, God. I thank you, Lord, that your word is life-changing, Father. I thank you, Lord, that your word changes our life, God. Our minds are renewed by your word, God. Our bodies are touched by your word. Our lives are changed in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I yield to you tonight to use me. Speak through me. I need you. Can't do it without you. Can't do nothing on my own. I need you, Lord. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, tonight, I want to talk to you about persistent faith. Persistent faith. Being persistent with your faith. You know, maybe you're in here tonight and you've been believing for something for a long time. Or maybe you're getting tired because you hadn't seen the manifestation of what you're believing for. Um, you're getting weary. You know, maybe it's healing in your body. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's a member of your family that you're believing for. Tonight, I got a word for you that's going to encourage you not to give up. Amen? And so, I want to start off with this. Just to tell you, don't give up on God. Amen? Don't give up on the Word of God because uh, God's Word is true. And God cannot lie. That's one thing God cannot do is He cannot lie. Amen? And so the Word of God is true. Everything He put in there is true. And so we have to stand on His Word in spite of how frustrated we may get sometimes because we get tired of waiting. Amen? Sometimes we feel that we believe, and we believe, and we believe, and we believe, and we believe, but we still haven't seen the manifestation of what we're believing for. Amen? And sometimes we have a tendency to get tired and weary and give up. And I can raise my hand. I'm one of them. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that uh, I have certain things that I've believed for for a long time. You know, and, and there's times that I, I get weary and I want to give up. But there's something in me that won't let me give up. Amen? It's the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of me that keeps me going. You know, that I have to keep running back to Jesus and run back to His Word and get into His Word every time. You know, that I want to get slack and, and uh, want to give up. And so I'm here to tell you tonight not to give up. But stand in faith. Keep standing and be persistent about your prayers and about your faith and what you're standing on. And, and stand on the Word and stand on what God's Word says and don't quit. You know, because like I said a while ago, I believe that God cannot lie. Everything God says is true. And He says that my Word will not return void, but it shall accomplish that which it was sent forth to accomplish. And, and I believe and I've experienced it in my life, and I know that there's others in here that you've experienced it in your life, that the Word literally changes situations. The Word changes circumstances in our life. This Word changes things. Even in the natural realm, it changes things. Because whatever you're speaking the Word to, has to get in line with the Word of God because He said, My Word will not fail. And so either you're going to believe this Word or you're not going to believe this Word. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're serving God, you might as well believe His Word and stand on His Word and take it for everything that it is because it is the Word of God. It is alive and it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And he says that my word will not return void, then by God that settles it. It will not return void. Amen? He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall stand forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We will die and move on to heaven, but this word will never change. Amen? I don't care how many of us die and leave this earth, 
the generation coming behind us is going to be standing on the same word that we're standing on the day. Amen? It's not going to change. It's the same word. It will never change. And, and you know, to me, that is just so awesome that this word never changes, but yet it seems so fresh. <laughs> you know? And it's so good. Even though it's something that people have been standing on for over 2,000 years. You know? But yet it's so fresh at times. And it's so alive on the inside of us. You know, that tells you right there, man, that this is, this is an awesome word. That the word of God is powerful. You know, that, that it never loses its power. The word will never, ever, ever lose its power. Never will it lose its power. It will always carry that power if we just stand on it and believe. Amen? And, and you know, a lot of times people give up. But it, it's not God that's quitting, it's us that quits. You know, it's not the Word that quits, it's us that quits. Amen? So tonight, i got an encouraging word for you. And we're going to start off in John chapter 5. Uh, Ellie informed me that I have to stay within this light right here on this floor. <laughs> she said, if I get out this light, then I get out of the video. And so I'm going to tell you something. It's hard for me to do that, but I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. Uh, we're going to read out of John chapter 5, starting in verse 1. And as you know, this is the story about the man at the pool of Bethesda. And I'm going to tell you something. This is an awesome story. And, and I don't know how you've always looked at this story. Everybody's always looked at this story differently. A lot of people's looked at this story and says, oh, you know, God felt sorry for that man. You know, that man didn't have no faith or he wouldn't have been there for 38 years. You know, and, and, and who knows how a lot of people feels about this man that's in this story. The Bible says he was like that for 38 years. It didn't say he was at the pool for 38 years. It don't tell you how long he was at the pool. It just tells you he was crippled for 38 years. Amen? Verse 1. Later, Jesus went to Jerusalem for a special feast. In Jerusalem, there is a pool with five covered porches, which is called Bethesda. In the Hebrew language, the pool is near the sheep gates. Many sick people were laying on the porches beside the pool. Some were blind. Some were crippled, some were paralyzed, and they waited for the water to move. Verse 4. Sometimes an angel of the Lord came down to the pool and stirred up the water. After the angel did this, the first person to go into the pool was healed from any sickness he had. No matter what that sickness was, when they touched that pool, they got their healing. Amen? Uh, verse 5. A man was laying there who had been sick for 38 years. This man had been sick for 38 years. And, and sometimes we get sick for a few years and we want to give up. Amen? Sometimes... Uh, uh, we pray for a few years and we want to give up because we don't see the manifestation of our prayer. But this man was sick for 38 years. Amen? Verse 5, one more time. A man was laying there who had been sick for 38 years. Verse 6. When Jesus saw the man, he knew that he had been sick for such a long time. Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? Verse 7. The sick man answered, Sir, there is no one to help me get into the pool when the water stirs, when the water starts moving. While I am coming to the water, someone else always gets in before me. And so that tells me 
that something had to be working on this man's body because every time the angel stirred that water, he started to go towards the water. So he was not completely paralyzed. Some of his limbs had to be working, and otherwise he wouldn't have been trying to get to the water. He had to be doing something to get to the water because he said every time the water starts moving and I go to get in the water, somebody else beats me to it. And so that tells me that some limbs had to be working somehow or another for him to try to get into the water. But let me tell you what amazes me about this story. What really amazes me about this story is when you read it in different translations, you see that there was multitudes of people around this pool. And this thing was huge, man. I mean, it was big. And there were multitudes of people at this pool. This guy was not by himself by no means. There was a lot of people at this place where he was, and there were a lot of people trying to get into this water to get their healing. It told us that in the Scripture, that there was people there that was lame, paralyzed, blind. All kind of things were wrong with them. So I'm going to tell you, there was a lot of competition there trying to get into the water when the angel stirred the water. Amen? And so, but what really impresses me about this particular story is this. Is out of all those people, Jesus came to this man. Think about that. Out of all those people around that pool, he came to this man. You know, we don't know how far away he lived from this place. We don't know how far he had to travel to go to this place or if he just stayed here overnight all the time, you know. We don't know where he came from, but don't tell us none of that. All we know is this. He was laying at that pool, and he was laying, and he was trying to get into that pool. And I'm going to tell you, you just imagine multitudes of people in the same position, in the same circumstance, and they're trying to get into this pool. Imagine what that would be like every time that water stirs, these people are waiting on this water to stir, and they're ready to race to this pool to get in it, to get healed from whatever they need healing for. You know, it kind of reminds you of Black Friday when all the people are standing outside the shopping stores, and they unlock the door, man. I'm going to tell you what, you better get out the way or you can get run over because people just flat don't care. They will hurt you trying to get in that store, you know. And so when I think about that, I kind of think about, uh, Black Friday when people are fighting and pushing and everything else to get into these stores. It was probably that way with this pool as well. You know, these people were waiting on this water to stir and they were, they were in a big hurry to get into this water so they can get healed from whatever it was that was ailing them. Amen? But you know, here's this guy and he was there for 38 years. And, and out of all those people there, he's the one that Jesus came up to. I like that. I just think that's awesome, you know. And, and uh, verse 8, well, back to uh, verse 7. Uh, let's just read verse 6 again. Let me pick back up there. When Jesus saw the man, he knew that he had been sick for such a long time. Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? The, man, the sick man answered, sir, there is no one to help me get into the pool when the water starts moving. While I am coming to the water, someone else always gets in before me. And so one thing I see there is this. He was looking for a mediator. He was looking for somebody to help him get in the water. Amen? And guess what? There was no one to help him get in this water. No one. And so I love it in verse 8 when Jesus said, Sir, he, uh, verse 7, let's see. What did I just read? I just read verse 7. Verse 8, then Jesus said, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And what I really like the most is the fact that this guy didn't even know who Jesus was. He had no idea who this was. And, and you know, a lot of the stories you read in the Bible uh, where people get healed and miracles take place, most of them knew who Jesus was. This guy had no idea who was talking to him. None at all. If he would, he wouldn't have said, sir. He would have said, Jesus, there's nobody here to help me. He said, sir, when the water starts moving, there's no one here to help me get into the water. He had no idea who he was talking to, and he was talking to Jesus. And so Jesus tells the man, stand up, 
and pick up your mat and walk. And this guy done exactly what he told him to do. And I'm going to tell you something, man. I love that because here's what it makes me think about when I read that. It is get out of your mind that Jesus was talking to him. This is you talking to him. This is me talking to him because he didn't know it was Jesus. All he heard was a man walk up to him and start speaking to him. Now, I'm going to tell you something. He didn't know who Jesus was, so what got him healed was what? He believed. Amen? He was standing in faith. And we may not think he was, but you know what? You've got to be in faith to go to this place every day. And he was believing to get into that water every time that water started moving. He was believing to get into that water, and he was believing that he was going to be healed. It just came in another avenue that he never expected. You know, and I'm going to tell you something. I like that, man. I love that. Verse 8. Then Jesus said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And immediately the man was well. He picked up his mat and began to walk. The day this happened was a Sabbath day. Verse 10. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, Today is the Sabbath. It is against our law for you to carry your mat on the Sabbath day. Don't be moved by the fact that the man has been not able to walk in 38 years or nothing like that. You know, that's how religious they are. They're just criticizing him because he's breaking the law, you know. But that's what I love about Jesus. He didn't give a flip about their law. Amen? He healed people on the Sabbath day. But here's the religious people. The religious people always want to get in the way of what God wants to do. And, and, and it, ain't, it ain't about religion. Amen? But he answered, The man who made me well told me, Pick up your mat and walk. He had no idea who told him that. All he knew was there was a man that told him to pick up his mat and walk. And, and when I read that, I think about this. I think about me and you. Because your words are just that powerful. My words are just that powerful to where we can walk up to a lame man and say, pick up your mat and walk. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Because he heard those words and he responded just like that. He didn't know he was talking to Jesus. What healed him was those words that came to him. Those words is what caused him to respond to those words and do something that he hadn't done in 38 years, guys. In 38 years, the man ain't walked. But all of a sudden, a man comes up to him and says, pick up your mat and walk. And 38 years later, he, he, he jumps up, grabs his mat, and he starts walking. And so I'm going to tell you something. He didn't know who he was talking to. What healed him was those words that Jesus spoke. He grabbed hold of those words and he put faith to those words. You know? And I'm going to tell you something, man. Your words are powerful. Your words are the most powerful thing in this universe. That's why it's so important that you and I speak over our life. We speak over our children. We speak over our finances. We speak over our marriage. We speak over every area of our life because our words carry that kind of power. Amen? And when he heard those words, apparently nobody had ever come up to him and did that and said those words to him. But here comes a man that's in enough faith and bold enough to tell this lame man that's been sitting by this pool all this time, pick up your mat and walk. And this guy had no idea who was talking to him. He heard those words and he jumped up, grabbed his mat, and he started walking. I'm going to tell you something. To me, that is just totally awesome. But I'm going to tell you something. That guy had hope, man. He didn't lose hope. He hoped every day that he was going to be healed. He hoped every day that he was going to make it into that water and get his healing. Amen? And it came in another avenue, but he got his healing. And, and sometimes we do the same thing. Sometimes we always try to take different avenues to get what we're trying to get. Amen? But I'm going to tell you something. This came in a different avenue than what he expected it to come. But when it came, he grabbed hold of it. He responded to the word with action. Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. And he responded. 
and he did what he had not done in years. He jumped up, grabbed that mat, and he started walking. What is the difference between him then and us now? Amen? When, when the Word of God speaks to us, why can't we respond the same way and put action to what the Word says? Because you know what God did? God told this man to do something that was absolutely impossible for him to do. He ain't done it in 38 years. The man ain't done it. In the natural, he could not do what Jesus told him to do, but he responded. And he did what he could not do in the natural. And I, every one of us in this room knows that the way God works is he does not work by what we can do in the natural. He always tries to get us to do things that we cannot do in the natural. Amen? And so I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes God may ask you to do things that just seems totally crazy. But you know what? He needs you to be faithful and, and trusting because... I believe that that's when we get into places to where we have no choice but to believe Him. You know, just believe Him. And you know, we find ourselves doing that when we go on mission trips. We find ourselves places where we don't want to be. We wouldn't choose to be there. But I'm going to tell you what, you put your trust in God and He always comes through. Amen. And, and He always asks us to do things that is not possible for us to do it in the natural. Because if it was, we'd do it all the time. Amen. And so, a lot of times, God speaks to us, we just think it's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. That can't be God telling me that. That must be the devil. <laughs> now, how many of us has done that? No, nah, that ain't God. That's the devil telling me that. Well, the devil, for one, ain't going to never tell you to do anything good or positive. Amen? His stuff is always negative. Verse 10. I already read that, didn't I? Verse 11. But he answered, the man who made me well told me, pick up your mat and walk. Verse 12. Then they asked him, who is the man who told you to pick up your mat and walk? But the man who had been healed did not know who it was because there was so many people in that place. There were so many people in there, he had no idea who told him to pick up his mat and walk. All he did as he heard those words, and he responded. And I'm going to tell you something, it could have been chaos around him. Kind of like us when we're in big crowds, and there's a lot of noise. You know? And I, I don't know about y'all, but I can be sitting in a room with 10 or 12 people, and, and if everybody's talking at one time, and you're talking to me, Anthony, there's a pretty good chance. I'm going to be nodding my head, but I don't have a clue what you're saying. And I find myself in that situation a lot, you know. Even sometimes here at church, we can be in a staff meeting or something, and we're at that spot where everybody's talking at one time, and, and, and you're trying to listen, but really, you, you don't know what, it's like chaos sometimes. Because everybody's talking at one time, I'm not saying our staff meetings are like that, I'm just using that as an example. When you have 10 or 12 people, and you're in one spot, and everybody starts talking, it's hard for me to focus on what Anthony's telling me because I'm hearing all this other stuff happening around me, and I'm trying my best to focus on him, and I'm watching his lips like I can read his lips or something, because I really can't hear him. I know he's talking to me, but I really don't know what he's saying, so I'm going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he really thinks I know what he's saying, but I really don't. <laughs> you know. And so next time you talk to me, we're around a lot of people, you know what's happening with me, all right? Um, but you know, you think about that, <clears throat> and sometimes we find ourselves in those type of atmospheres and circumstances. And sometimes there's so much chaos going on in our life, just different circumstances in our life and different situations that's happening in our family or in our marriage and, or in our finances. You know, there's just like chaos happening all around us. And, and, and Jesus is trying to talk to us, but we're hearing all this other stuff. You know, and, and, and we can't hear clear because we're letting all this other stuff get our attention. And a lot of times that's what happens to us in a crowd. I'm trying to hear this person over here, this person over here, this person over here, and I can't hear the one right in front of me, you know. But I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times we have to shut everything else off and listen to the Word and listen to what Jesus is telling us because it tells us right there in that Scripture that there were so many people around this guy 
He don't know who spoke to him. But you know what? He heard those words. Pick up your mat and walk. Out of all that chaos happening around him, he heard the word and he responded to the word and he did what he told him to do. And I, I tell you, I, I like that, man, because a lot of times I got chaos happening around me and, and I have to shut all that off and listen to what Jesus is telling me. Listen to what the word is telling me and shut everything else off. Because a lot of times, man, the devil puts so many things around us to get us sidetracked, to get us off focus. You know, a lot of times he says, oh, you can't do it, you ain't done it in 10 years, you ain't going to start now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that's how the devil talks to us, you know. Well, you know, if it was God, then it would have already happened. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, we have to know how to push that kind of stuff right out the way and stay focused on what the Word says and stay focused on what God tells us and what He's speaking to us. Amen? You know, it's kind of like I was telling somebody earlier, you know, that when you get born again, um, you know, that's such a great experience that you want your whole family born again. You know, because... Uh, when I got born again, it was just the greatest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Man, the feeling that I felt, I felt that sin lift off of my shoulders. You know, I felt God take that burden off of me that was on me, that weight of sin that I was carrying. I felt Him lift that off of me the day I gave my life to Jesus. And that was such a great experience, man, that I wanted everybody to experience that, you know. And, and, and I was telling them earlier, you know, I said the first thing was I wanted my family to experience, my brothers and my sisters. And, and, and you know, I, I didn't want to see none of my family members die and go to hell, you know. But I remember uh, for a, a lot of years, you know, I wanted to talk to my family about the Lord, but I never could do it because I never could get the courage up to do it, you know. And God always just opened that door where I just stepped right in and I was able to do it, you know. But it came to a time to where I had to listen. And God says, now's the time, George. Now's the time. Go now and talk to them. Now, right now. You know, and a lot of times it's almost like I fell into it, but it don't matter. The fact is, is I was there at the right time. I witnessed to them, and they gave their life to the Lord, every one of them. And, and so I've had an opportunity. I've, I've seen three of my family members die my, as far as brothers, and three of them has died, but I'm going to tell you, all three of them have given their life to the Lord, and I know they're in heaven. And, and, and you know what? When I gave my life to the Lord, they was not saved. They was not saved. But when I gave my life to the Lord, it became one of my heart's desires to see my family members saved. And I still have that heart's desire because I have nephews and I have nieces that aren't saved, that aren't serving God. And I'm not giving up on them neither. You know? But I'm going to tell you something. If I can be persistent about my prayer, if I can be persistent about speaking the word over them and say, God, I see all my family members in the house of God serving you and praising you, God. I see them with their hands lifted high, God. I see them with tears coming out their eyes. I see them worshiping you, God. I see them in love with you, Father. And God, your word says that if I pray to the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers across their path, God. And so, Father, I thank you for sending laborers across their path. And that's what I used to pray for my brothers. And I used to say, Lord, send laborers across their path because that's what the Word says. If you stand on the Word, the Word's not going to return void. Lord, I thank you for sending laborers across their path. I didn't care if I was the laborer or not. If, if I'm the laborer, fine, so be it. But I really don't care whether I am or not as long as they get saved. That's what matters, Amen. But I'm going to tell you something, man. When you stand on the Word, the Word will not fail you. Amen? The Word will not fail you. And just like this man had to be persistent about going to that pool every day, he was persistent. When that water moved, his goal was to get into that water. Amen? Now, 38 years, he hadn't made it yet. But you know what? Something greater happened to him. He didn't have to hit the water in the pool. He hit the water. Amen. He hit the living water, the Word of God. Amen. And when he came in contact with the Word of God, everything changed. Everything turned around in his life. And I'm here to tell you guys tonight that we are not the same people that we used to be. 
because we are in contact with a powerful God, a God that is alive and He's powerful, and, and His Word will stand forever and ever and ever, and that very Word is changing us, and we change day after day after day after day. The Bible says that we change from glory to glory to glory to glory, and faith, the faith, the faith, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and it's fresh. Every day it's fresh. You know, it's just like this story. I've read this story a million times, but I see this story different than I've ever seen it before because it's fresh, amen? This Word is fresh, man. The Word of God is alive, and it changes us, and it changes circumstances, and it changes the people around us, amen? Um, let me read verse 15 again. Then the man, let's see, where did I stop at? 14? Oh, I didn't get to 14, did I? Let me pick back up. I'm going to read 13 again. But the man who had been healed did not know who it was because there were so many people in that place and Jesus had left. Verse 14. Later, Jesus found the man at the temple and said to him, See, you are well now. Stop sinning so that something worse does not happen to you. So this was not just about his physical condition. It was more about his spiritual condition than it was anything. But you know what? God is so good that when we get saved, we get healed, we get delivered, we get set free in every area. Amen? And I love that, man. You know, and where did he find him at, man? He found him in the temple. He found him in the temple is where he found him at. He ran across his path again, and he's in the temple. <clears throat> See, you are well now. Stop sinning so that something worse does not happen to you. Verse 15 then the man left and told his people that Jesus was the one who had made him well. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. That's why it's important that we go everywhere and we tell people what Jesus has done in our life. I don't care how long ago it's been, Sheila. It's still fresh. What God has done in your life is not dead. It is not dull. It is still fresh. Because it is a testimony of what God has done in your life. And God has changed you. Lord of mercy, where He's brought you to, from, from where you used to be. God is a good God. And every one of us can say that. If we think about where God has brought us from and where He has brought us to, what an awesome testimony we have. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Because you know as well as I do, if it wasn't for him saving you and setting you free, you'd be sitting in a jick joint right now. Amen? Or somewhere smoking a joint. Or sitting in your living room drinking beer. I know I'd probably either be dead or in prison, one or the two. I probably wouldn't be here, i tell you that. But God. But God. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to tell you right now, my deliverance is just as fresh to me right now as it was 15 years ago, 20 years ago, it's still just as fresh. When I go into prisons and I share my testimony, I'm telling you, I can feel that thing all over me. It's like I just feel that wonderful experience all over again. Amen? And, and so that's what this guy was doing. He is going out now, and he's going to start telling people what Jesus had done in his life because now he just found out that it was Jesus that spoke the word to him. He didn't know who it was that spoke the word to him. But now he's going out to tell his people that Jesus is the one who healed me. Jesus is the one who spoke his word to me and set me free. And guys, I'm here to tell you tonight, that we better preach Jesus more now than we've ever preached Him before because this world don't want to hear about it. Amen? And they're getting further and further and further away from God and away from the Lord. 
And I'm going to tell you something. They are intimidated by the word Jesus. They don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. And I don't care because if I pray anywhere in front of anybody, I'm going to start off with the name of Jesus and I'm going to have the name of Jesus in the middle of it and I'm going to have the name of Jesus at the end of it. If they don't like it, that's just too bad. Amen? But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put Jesus all up in that prayer, man, especially when I'm around religious people, man, who when I hear them pray, they don't say in the name of Jesus. They say, in your son's name. And I just, I, just, I just can't feel it. I got to hear Jesus. Amen. Not just in your son's name, but Jesus. I love that name. There's something about that name that it carries power. When we speak that name, it carries power. And the devil trembles when he hears you say the name of Jesus. And religious people, it makes them nervous when they hear the name of Jesus. So I'm going to say it even more and more and more and more. I don't care. They just have to get nervous. But Jesus said to them, My Father never... Let me, let me go to verse 16. Because Jesus was doing this on the Sabbath day, some evil people began to what? Persecute Him. But Jesus said to them, My Father never stops working. And so I... Keep working too. Amen? Jerry, Jesus never stops working. Don't stop, Jerry. Don't stop. Tell everybody about Jesus. Tell everybody what Jesus has done in your life because He never stops working in your life. Don't stop letting Him work in your life. Don't stop testifying for Him. Don't stop sharing your testimony. Uh, Kima, man, you got an awesome testimony. I was blown away when I went to Africa with that girl, and I heard her testimony. It just blew me away. Girl, you need to be sharing that testimony in some places where there's people going through what you're going through. And I'm not saying you're not. I'm just telling you, if you're not, I encourage you, share that testimony because that testimony will set people free. Amen? Because I'm going to tell you, there's thousands and thousands of women that are going through what you've been through. And you, Sheila, and every one of us sitting in this room. Every one of us sitting in this room. There's people in this room. God has healed you and touched your body. You have to tell people what Jesus did in your life because God wants to touch them and do it in their life. Amen? And I'm going to tell you something. Our testimony is an avenue for Him to work through. Amen? And something I'm finding out is a lot of times, man, when you start preaching to people, they don't want to hear what you've got to say. But I'm going to tell you something. If you start it off and go, let me tell you a story. And start it off by your story. Let me tell you, I used to be an alcoholic, and I used to be a drug addict, and I used to do this, and I used to do that. But there was a day that I gave my life to Jesus, and when I gave my life to Jesus, everything started changing. I wish I could tell you that it changed overnight, but it didn't change overnight. It took years for it to change. But I want you to know that I'm free now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something, man. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the prison. I've shared my testimony. And I had ten, at least ten guys come up to me in different services and say, you didn't tell your story, you just told mine. Amen. You know why? Because there's so many people going through the identical thing that I went through. And when I share that testimony with them, man, it just fires them up. Because you know what? They say if God can do it in his life, I know he'll do it in my life. If God saved him, I know he can save me. If God uses him, I know God can use me. And that's why it's important that we go places and we share our testimony. And we tell people what Jesus has done in our life. Amen? And I'm going to tell you something. I know that we're talking about persistent faith, standing in faith and believing God. Amen? And I don't know what you've been standing in faith for, but I want to encourage you tonight to keep standing. The Bible says when you've done all you can do, Jerry, stand. Stand. No matter what it looks like around you, stand. No matter how many times the devil knocks you down, get up and stand. Don't quit standing. Because I'm going to tell you something, quitters don't make it. Quitters don't make it. And people who quit will not make it. They will, they will trip up, they will fall and continue to fall and continue to fall until they take that stand and say, devil, I'm through quitting. 
That's it, devil. I ain't quitting no more. I'm done. Quitting is not a part of my life no more. You can knock me down, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to bounce right back up. You remember when we were kids? Now, I was born in the 60s, and everybody in here looked like you're older than I am, so you should be able to relate with what i got to tell you. But you remember when we were kids, and, and Anthony, I know you remember this because you're a guy, and there are other guys in here. I know you remember it too. They had this little thing, you know, and it was, looked like a clown, you know, and it was made, made out of a, a, just looked like a blow-up toy or something. But it was a, a boxy thing. You box it, and that joker would go to the ground, and it would pop right back up. I don't care how many times you hit it, that joker would bounce right back up. And, and, and that's what it makes me think of when I think about that, where it says, when you're done, all you can do is stand. And when I think about the devil knocking me down, I think about that toy or that, that blow-up thing or whatever. What was the thing called? Anybody? Huh? Boppy? Boppy sounds good. Boppy sounds good, but I'm going to tell you what. When I think about the devil knocking us down and us getting up, that's what it reminds me of, is you've got to be like that boppy. No matter how many times the devil knocks you down, get up. Get up. I don't care if he kicks you. I don't care how long you're down. What's important is you get up. You might stay down for a few days, but get up. You might stay down for a few weeks, but what matters is you getting up. Amen? It ain't about how many times the devil knocks you down. It ain't about how many times circumstances and situations knock you down. It's all about you getting up. Because I'm going to tell you something. God can't use you when you're down there feeling sorry for yourself. But time you bounce back up. <laughs> and you can say, devil, you might have took a bite out of me, but you didn't need all of me. I'm still here, and I'm still fighting. I'm going to tell you something, then God's going, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, because he's got our back, man. He said, what things soever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What things soever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Don't you know that he hates it when we get knocked down and we stay down? Because when we get knocked down and we stay down, we are in a losing position. Amen? And the whole time God's saying, that is not you. That is not you. Get up. That is not you. Get up. Get up now. Get up now. Get up now. That's not you. Amen? And so, I'm going to tell you, you've got to remember that, man. When the devil takes a bite of you and he knocks you down, remember that bouncy thing and spring up. Amen? Go with me to uh, Romans. Romans 4. Romans 4, 18 and 19. <clears throat> Verse 18. Everybody there? You there? Say amen. That wasn't everybody. If you dare say amen, I guess you got to say it louder. If you're there, say amen. amen. A little bit louder. Amen. A little bit louder. Amen. A little bit louder. Amen. Oh, yeah, now we're talking. Verse 18. There was no hope that Abraham would have children. I like the way that started out. There was no hope that Abraham would have children. Just like the, pool lay, the guy laying at the pool in the natural there was no hope that he would ever get his healing because it was so hard for him to get into that water. Amen? There was no hope that Abraham would have children. But Abraham, what? Believed God and continued hoping and continued hoping and continued hoping but Abraham believed God and continued hoping and hoping and hoping and believing and believing and believing. See, we can't lose hope and we can't quit believing. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. If you've got dreams and visions on the inside of you, you've got to speak to them things. 
You got to stir them up on the inside of you. Don't let them die within you. Get up in the mornings and speak to those dreams and speak to those visions and speak life unto them so that you don't lose hope. Amen? I'm preaching to myself. Hey, hey, I love it when I preach to myself. Continue hoping. And so he became the father of many nations as God told him. Your descendants also will be too many to count. I'm going to tell you, that's pretty darn awesome right there, guys. When you don't have no children at all, and God tells you that you're going to be the father of nations, and that you will have so many children that you won't even be able to count them. Think about that. I mean, that's awesome, guys. And I'm going to tell you something. If Abraham can stand in faith after hearing a word like that, then why can't you and I stand in faith for the things that God is speaking to us and speaking over us and never lose hope, but believe God and stand in faith for what God has spoken over us. Herbert, I know you've got dreams and you've got visions on the inside of you that God has put in you. God put those dreams and visions in you. And you know what? You cannot lose hope. You have to believe and you have to keep hoping. You have to believe and you cannot lose hope. Amen? But keep stirring them up. Stir them up. Stir them up. Stir them up. Just like the angel came down and stirred that water. When that angel stirred that water, bam! Boy, somebody touched that water. And just like that, they got their healing. But I'm going to tell you something. We got the ability to stir up what's on the inside of us, and it's just as powerful as it was when that angel stirred that water and then people stepped in that water and healed it. The power that's on the inside of us is just that powerful and even more so. Amen? Because the word that is on the inside of us is the word of God. And he says, My word will never pass away, but it shall stand forever and ever and ever and ever, and ever. And so we have to continue speaking that word and standing in faith and, and continue to hope and never lose hope. Amen? Amen? All right, now let's look at uh, Romans ten seventeen. Y'all get something out of this tonight? So faith comes from hearing the good news. And people hear the good news when someone tells them about Christ. Faith comes by the good news. Amen? And somebody has to share the good news. That, folks, would be you. Amen? And me. We have to share the good news. We have to share that good news. Um, uh, in the past year or two, I joined a, uh, a Christian motorcycle organization called CMA. And uh, I really like it, you know, because it's all different denominations. It's all, I mean, you've got, you got Baptists, you've got Methodists. You got them, most of them are Baptists and Methodists. And I'm, I'm probably one of the few fired up Pentecostals in there. But I'm going to tell you what, boy, God put me in there for a reason. And I love it, man. I love it. And, and I, just, I just like being around, I like being around different people that, that, that love God and they believe God. They might be of a different denomination, but that don't matter, man, as long as they're preaching Jesus. You know, if, if they choose not to pray in tongues, I say they're lost. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something, when they get around me, they're going to feel something different. Amen? They're going to say, man, that guy got something I don't, I don't got. I want what he's got. Amen? And then I'm going to have to tell them. I'm going to have to share the good news with them. So faith comes from hearing the good news, and people hear the good news when someone tells them about Christ. Amen? Isaiah 9. Did I tell y'all this is going to be an hour and a half tonight? Okay, I'm telling you now. <laughs> All right. We have to 
come in when they get here. Uh, Isaiah 9, ain't that what I said? 9, verse 6. Are you there yet? Huh? Everybody there yet? Everybody there yet? A child has been born to us. God has given a son to us. He will be what? Huh? Somebody tell me what it says. Wonderful. What else? Counselor. What else? Mighty God. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. That's the God that lives on the inside of us. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Mighty God. The same God that created the heavens and earth abide on the inside of us. Glory to God. He's alive. He's a powerful. And He's sharper than any two-edged sword. And He lives and abides on the inside of you and I. He's here tonight. He's in you, He's in me, He's in this place. Jesus is in the house, amen? Jesus is in the house. And you know we can say that everywhere we go, we can say Jesus is in the house. You know why? Because you just walked in. And when you walk in, Jesus walks in. Just like the guy at the pool, he was amongst all that chaos all those people around him, all those people trying to get into that water, all that stuff happening all around him, but Jesus stepped into the house and spoke His Word to that man. Out of all those people, He spoke to that man. And that man jumped up and done something he ain't done in 38 years. And that same Word that spoke to that man then is speaking to us tonight. And I'm here to tell you that it carries just as much power now as it carried then. Amen? That word is powerful. And it changes lives. It changes our life, and it changes the lives around us. Amen? Alright, James chapter 2. Oh, sorry, let me get right out of here. Oh. James 2.17. Everybody there? Everybody there? Jerry, you there? Read that for me, somebody. Read it, read it loud, proud. James 2.17. All right, I read it right here. At that time, proud people will be what? Made humble. And they will bow low with shame. Proud people will be made humble. Proud people. Did I, did I send you in the right place? Oh, I'm still in Isaiah. <laughs> no wonder that didn't sound right. I was thinking to myself, that don't sound right. But I wasn't going to tell you all that. <laughs> so are you all there? Well, how about read that for me then? Because I'm still not there. Mm -mm. I like that right there. Now I got to read it too. In the same way, faith, by itself that does nothing is dead. Faith by itself without anything being done is dead. Amen? And, and that's what happened with this guy at the pool. The word was spoken and he put action to the word. Amen? It's no different with you and I today. We can read this Bible up and down. We can read it hours at a day. 
We can spend hours and hours praying, getting on our knees and doing everything that we want to do. But I'm going to tell you something. If we don't get in faith and put action to this word, we ain't doing nothing. Amen? And I know that might not be proper language, ain't, but I use it all the time anyway. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, faith without works is dead. And, and if you read the Gospels, when Jesus did miracles, he always told somebody to do something that they was not capable of doing in the natural. And you see it time after time after time after time. He spoke to blind men and says, do you believe? If they would have said the wrong thing, then they would not have received their healing. Amen? He asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Because they had heard that he was opening the eyes of the blind. They went to him wanting to see. And the first thing he asked them is, do you believe that I am able to do this? And then he wanted to hear their response. Their response was the whole key. Amen? They said, yes, we believe. So shall it be. But see, it all went back to them. They had to believe. They had to believe. If, if, if they would have said, well, maybe, Lord, maybe, maybe, then they would not have got their healing. Amen? They got their healing because of faith. Amen? And, and you know what? It's no different now than it was then. It's the same thing. We have to believe. And we have to put action to the Word and do the things that we cannot see ourselves doing in the natural. Amen? we got to step out into the supernatural. We got to step out where we've never stepped before and trust God. You got to get out of the boat and step on the water and do something you've never done before. Amen? Lord of mercy, I'm flat stepping on my toes tonight. Let me close with prayer. Father, we just thank you for tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Lord, I thank you for your word tonight, God. I thank you, Lord, that it's touched each and every person in here tonight. Anybody that needs healing in their body, God, I thank you that they're healed right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing into their bodies. I speak peace of mind into their mind in the name of Jesus. I speak peace into their life in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word brings deliverance and your word brings salvation. Your word brings healing. Father, we thank you for the manifestation of it in our life in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for coming.